Hello, welcome to the course on other signal processing for music applications. This week we are focusing on uh, transformations, on uh, describing one application of the spectral modeling uh, techniques that we are covering in this course. And in these programming uh, lectures we are actually trying to understand the programming aspect of it and the code that uh, we have been putting together on the SMS tools uh, package. So in this uh, lecture, I want to talk about the, the most sophisticated model that uh, we have covered, which is the harmonic plus stochastic model, and the transformations uh, we can do with that. So we have been uh, describing uh, this type of block diagram, in which after all this analysis uh, that uh, we do uh, of understanding uh, the harmonics, extracting the, their information, and then subtracting them from the original signal, we obtain this stochastic approximation. And now we are focusing on these two red uh, um, blocks in which uh, we are, can apply transformations to both stochastic representation and harmonic uh, representation. And of course then we can synthesize back. One of these transformations is a little bit special, which is the morphing. The morphing uh, requires two analyses of two sounds. So we have uh, one sound uh, that uh, performs all this analysis and another one that does the same. And we are basically interpolating these two set of functions, uh, the arrays of frequency and amplitudes and the envelopes of the stochastic approximation. And then we do the synthesis in the, in the same way. Okay, so let's uh, go to first uh, the code that performs uh, these uh, transformations and the, the one for the harmonics is a harmonic transformation so we have this uh, file called harmonic transformations in which we do uh, the transformation just on the harmonic component of, uh, of this model and uh, the ones that uh, we have implemented the transformations that we have in the SMS uh, tools are the idea of scaling the harmonics, then stretching the harmonics uh, in a non-harmonic way, and then the idea of preserving or not the spectral shape or the timbre of the sound. Okay, so within this uh, function, uh, harmonic frequency scaling, we can do all this uh, at the same time if we pass uh, these uh, three control parameters. We're not going to go into the detail of this code, but basically we can see um, there is uh, here at the end the three basic uh, transformation uh, lines in which we have the, the frequencies, uh, that uh, these are the input frequencies of all the harmonics of a particular frame and uh, a particular kind of set of harmonics, the ones that exist and we apply a scaling factor, a multiplicative uh, scaling factor, so th this would be the transposition, what we call transposition. And then once we can uh, transpose, uh, we can also do the stretching. Okay, And this stretching is uh, a factor that depends on the harmonic. And this variable in valid is basically the harmonic number if it exists, so there is a, so we are um, elevating this uh, stretching factor to uh, this value. So it's a way to change the, the frequency depending on the harmonic. There are several ways of implementing this idea of stretching. We can do it, uh, in fact, the other way around by uh, uh, having uh, the harmonic number to the power of the stretching factor or this. You can play around with these two uh, implementations. And then uh, there is uh, the idea of timbre preservation. So in this uh, particular function, we are not uh, manipulating the magnitudes, but we are doing is if we are preserving the timbre, then we are changing the magnitudes in a way that we uh, give uh, to every harmonic the magnitude that is closer to the frequency that it originally had. So basically we have a spectral envelope and then we recompute the magnitudes in a way that it preserves the, the shape that originally had. 
then uh, we have the transformations that are specific for the combination of the harmonic and stochastic uh, components which uh, are in this uh, HPS transformation uh, file and there is basically two functions one that performs time scaling and the time scaling is done on the three components at the same time the frequency and amplitude of the harmonics and the stochastic envelope so it's performed uh, in this uh, core loop and basically it interpolates well in, in, in fact it just adds or deletes frames depending on this uh, time scaling uh, parameter and then there is the more complex uh, function which is the morphing that accepts the arrays uh, from the two uh, sounds so the analysis of the two sounds and according to these interpolation functions it chooses uh, a part of each so the core um, function uh, the core of the function is uh, just this loop that basically iterates over the whole uh, all the set of frames of the sound it finds the harmonics that are present in both sounds because of course the interpolation between two sounds can only happen if uh, there is uh, content in the, in the two if one has a zero th a harmonic uh, that becomes a very complex uh, thing to handle so in this code it looks for the intersection so the harmonics that are present and then it just performs the interpolation of the frequencies the magnitudes and the stochastic envelope when there is some information existing in, uh, in uh, both uh, sounds, at the frame of both sounds. So clearly the number of frames has to be the same and ideally the number of harmonics and the uh, stochastic envelope, uh, the number of uh, elements or uh, breakpoints in the, in the approximation function has to be the same. And that's, uh, that's what it does. And basically then we have this function call HPS uh, morph uh, function that wraps uh, these uh, functions and allows us to do analysis and synthesis and is the, the one that is called from the interface. So we have basically two uh, functions. One is the analysis that uh, returns the results of the analysis and then another is the transformation and synthesis that performs the transformation and uh, synthesis of the sound. Okay, and if we run this, uh, we can just execute that. We can just type run on HPF's morph. Um, okay. And this will execute both functions. Of course, we can also execute one on, uh, on the other independently by importing the file and then just calling the two uh, by, uh, separately. So this is the result of the analysis function that performs analysis of the two and this is the result of the transformation and synthesis that performs the uh, resynthesized uh, version of that. Since uh, we already have uh, listened to this uh, sound so there is no need uh, to listen them uh, here now but uh, please uh, feel free to play around with these functions it's uh, quite interesting uh, what you can do and of course by programming you can extend this uh, quite a lot and that's that's all uh, basically we have uh, gone through uh, the HPS part of uh, the transformations uh, within SMS tools uh, there is a number of transformations that are specific for the harmonic plus stochastic model and being the most sophisticated one it can perform some interesting things but it's a little bit difficult to uh, to use it so you have to know uh, to do proper analysis and uh, to control uh, these representations that are a little bit more sophisticated anyway so hopefully with these uh, you got an idea of the harmonic plus stochastic model in terms of its potential for transforming sounds sounds that of course have to be harmonic and they have to have a meaningful stochastic representation. If those sounds fulfill uh, that model, then uh, the number of things we can do with it is uh, really great. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and I will see you in next class. Bye bye.